What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew and today I have another video that I wish I had when I first, whoa, when I first started investing. I've been investing for about three years now, not a very long time in the grand scheme of things, but definitely long enough, I think, to bring you this video and share some lessons I've had to learn the hard way so that you don't have to learn them the hard way, whether that's saving you some money or some pain or something like that. Um, so this video is going to try and explain some uh, concepts, ideas, and insights that I use to understand what's happening in the market right now. Also, how to weather a time like this in the market where it's uh, red for a lot of retail and newer investors who are invested in high growth tech spec plays. Um, times like this where there are uh, other crazy things going on in terms of like altcoins, dogecoin, all of that stuff. Um, and in times where you feel like Wall Street is against you because trust me, that's that's there's always going to be some shady things going on in Wall Street and you can always play that card like, oh, Wall Street is conspiring against the retail investor. But my belief is if you subscribe to that all the time, you're never really going to set yourself in a position to succeed because you're always going to have that mindset that you're already kind of defeated. Instead, I think you just got to say, hey, this is the game. This is how it's played. I've got to learn the game. And if you Honestly, as, as cheesy and repetitive as it sounds, if you focus on fundamentals, long-term investing, finding good valuations, you will win. Um, and you know there are reasons for these retail, high-tech, high-growth spec plays for crashing. And I honestly don't think it's Wall Street. I honestly think it was just really overvalued based on some of these uh, market cycles and emotional cycles that we're going to look into in this video. So stick around for that. But let's just jump into the first concept here. It's really simple. And another one that seems kind of cheesy, but trust me, a lot of this cheesy stuff is very true. And I, I think you will come around as you become a longer term investor and stay in the market for longer. Uh, but the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I think a lot of new investors make is looking at the market in terms of days instead of years. And I do this, right? But I'm someone who's who's been in the market for a little longer and I've learned how to kind of, or I'm still learning, but I'm trying to learn how to control my emotions despite looking at these daily fluctuations um, because the biggest thing that I definitely want you to understand is that every single day, stock prices change, but every single day, the fundamentals of a business do not necessarily change. And if you understand that, you'll understand that the stock price and the ticker and the actual stock is not always representative of the fundamentals. And that's why day to day, it's very easy to forget that you're investing in an actual business that's in the real world, that's generating real revenues, real earnings, real profits. It's much easier to act like you're investing in a ticker symbol. Like it's much easier to think, oh, I'm buying AAPL instead of, oh, I'm buying into ownership of Apple, the company. Um, and if you look at it in terms of years where he's saying like, okay, this is like the years and then within the years I'm getting quarterly updates or I guess there'd be three, right? I'm getting quarterly updates on the fundamentals, strategic decision-making from management. Um, what are their projections look like? I'm getting these, these updates. It's much easier to focus on fundamentals if you look at things in terms of years instead of days. And days is going to cause a lot of emotions. I'm, I'm sure you felt it before. It's going to cause a lot of anxiety, maybe stress, second-guessing yourself. Just remember, this is what matters. Okay? I kind of drew a football there. Look at that. It's like a football. Right? See that? Okay. <laughs> Anyways. Um... So before we get into these uh, these cycles and charts, I want to give you a concrete example of a stock. And it might surprise you, it might not, but it might surprise you, it just might, which stock I'm talking about here in this example. So um, we kind of talked about this, right? Days cause stress, emotional, it's frustrating. This works well if you know what you're doing and you're investing in good companies and good stocks. But let's take a look at this example here, all right? So this chart that we're looking at here is a one year chart. So I'm going to reveal like a bunch more of where the chart goes and it's going to be over the course of a year, which means that this little drop here, this 20% drop happened over the course of maybe a couple of weeks or maybe a month and it doesn't feel good, right? Uh, this means that you've woken up and if you're watching it day by day, so this whole example is meant to show you the dangers of watching stocks day by day. But if you're watching it day by day, and you're a new investor, even more easily influenced by the stock price, then you might be thinking, oh my gosh, like I made the wrong decision, like I bought it at the wrong time, I should sell out of this and buy back later, or uh, the fundamentals are wrong, or I don't have conviction, and you can get very easily discouraged and kind of forced out of this position. But if we look a little further, you might regret that decision because if we link this together, isn't that cool? Isn't that cool how it like comes together? Anyways, um, 
So if you look, if you look at the continuation of this chart over the next few months, it actually comes back. It rises 24% from this point here, and it creates a new all-time high. And now you're kind of feeling like, okay, this is good, this is good. Maybe I'll buy some more, or maybe I'll just hold on to what I have now. I made the right decision, right? Um, very emotional. A lot of emotions have happened in just the past couple of months, and this could have led to a lot of emotional decision-making. And I always say emotions are the enemy of making money in the stock market. But then what happens? So if you overlay this here, you can see that, yeah, it rose 24% like we just saw, but then it dropped 18% over the next few weeks. And again, this is kind of like that slow burn where it's kind of like red, 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 red. And now you're like, okay, over the past few months, whoops, that's the eraser. Over the past few months, it's done pretty much nothing. It's come back to these lows here and it's just playing with my heart, you know? It's, it's red, 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 emotional, emotional, and then it gives me hope, and then it's red, red, red again. I'm out of this stock or something. Or maybe you look at the one month chart and you're like, this stock has done nothing in the past month. It's only up 1.7%. Let's look at it in terms of five years now, okay? So this was all the past year, but in five years, there's a big drop here late 2018, right? With the rest of the market. There was a big correction in the market late 2018 and it dropped 34%. And this was over the course from, sep from late September to January. So this is over several months. You're just seeing your position bleed, 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 bleed. And that might cause you to sell out, capitulate right there. But if you look, it went all the way back up <laughs> and, and then some. So let's look at this finally in terms of decades. Did the fundamentals of this company improve over the past year, over the past decade? Did this co company gain market share? Did this company trade at a decent valuation throughout? Probably not, which is why there's probably some, you know, some changes here. But over the past 10 years, the stock is up a thousand percent, over a thousand percent. And all this stuff that you were worrying about here, causing you to potentially sell out of this position, potentially getting out of this position, all this stuff that wasn't necessarily pointing to the fundamentals or representing the fundamentals. All that is that little box. All this translates to this little section, like right here. Over the past decade, that is like nothing. So that's just kind of showing you, you know, if you're just focused on the long term, focused on the fundamentals of the company, if it's a good company, if it's a good business, then it will win out. Um, and guess what company it is? It's Apple, yay, big reveal, Apple stock. Um, obviously, the, the biggest company in the world right now, um, and for good reason. So, I mean, I cherry-picked literally the, the, the one of the best businesses in the world, but it does go for a lot of different businesses. Maybe you won't see this parabolic rise right here, but you could definitely see like something like this. So anyways, uh, let's get into some cycles, right? So I wanna explain why or I mean, this isn't the exact explanation, but some ideas of why what's happening is happening in the market right now. We're seeing like a lot of these retail names and stuff getting hammered. And again, it's like, oh, Wall Street is just going for the retail investor. No, I like, like I don't think so. I mean, maybe there is some of that and there there is always gonna be some of that. But at the same time, a lot of these stocks were overvalued. Let's just be quite honest. And then we'll take a look at, uh, if we look at these cycles, I think it's gonna make a lot of sense to you. So. I just wanted to put this in here. This is the economic cycle. This is like a longer term cycle. This is a long term debt cycle with like a shorter term debt cycle that goes along it. But I wanted to put this in here because this red line is basically what the stock market looks like when following this, this long term economic cycle. Um, and I want to put this in there because yeah, stocks always go up over the longer term, but they also will go down for maybe a year or several years. And uh, it's gonna happen. So I want to put that in here to show you like this will happen. Cycles are a thing. Cycles happen um, and they will not be fun during some periods. Um, but this is kind of like a more a smaller scale cycle here. Um, this is a, a, a market cycle theory. And I think it makes a lot of sense, right? So there's a period of accumulation where everyone's kind of just buying some stocks, kind of finding a bottom, blah, blah. blah. And I'd say this is March 2020, kind of April, maybe April. Uh, April 2020, April as well, and some accumulation, right? Kind of trading, 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 and then boom, the markup. I would say this is like the majority of 2020. Um, th we did have like a correction in 2020 September, um, but for the most part, we saw stocks rise on this markup. Then distribution. Maybe this is kind of like the beginning of 2021, where stocks kind of, you know, they still 
and this is in terms of uh, growth in tech, by the way. This is in terms of growth in tech. We saw uh, distribution kind of, you know, things still going up generally. And then all of a sudden there's this massive spike. And this is February 2021. This is like late January, early February. And I'm sure we all felt euphoric uh, during this period where a lot of our growth stocks, spec stocks, all of that were just flying uh, every single day back to back to back. And then we see now we're in this markdown. So, I mean, to be quite honest, this is a very accurate depiction of what I'd say maybe the last year or so looked like in terms of growth in tech. So this is a, this is a theory that's been probably been back tested, probably been proven through a lot of the history in terms of the stock market. Um, and so it makes sense why this is happening, right? And then let's go to like the innovative spec plays, maybe more of the arc plays, like the pre-revenue companies that have really, really good stories, but not necessarily great fundamentals at the moment. They start to take off, you get some institutional investors, some smart money here, and then you get the public. You get media attention, Kathy Wood. You get enthusiasm, a lot of like maybe social media people pointing to it. And I'm not saying I am like exempt from this. I do, I mean, heck, I wear like an ARK Invest hat in half my videos just because I mean, I think, I think it looks cool, but I do own stocks that ARK has talked about. But I try and focus on the stocks that actually have revenue and uh, sometimes even profits. But this is very much the case for a lot of the spec stocks that are pre-revenue or barely have any profits and are trading at really high um, valuations. Then it becomes greed, delusion, and new paradigm. Like, I think this is so like scary spot on. Again, this is kind of peaking in February, 2021, where it's like, oh my gosh, ARK was right. The future is here. Um, you know, three, like I fell into it as well. Uh, 3D printing, I was like, wow, this is actually gonna be huge. Um, but the thing is, by the time I realized like this new paradigm, like for example, 3D printing, I was like, oh my gosh, this is way bigger than I really thought it was. A lot of these stocks were already trading at a huge valuation. Then it starts to drop, boom. And we're kind of in denial here, okay? Let me clear this out a little bit. Maybe we're kind of in denial here. And we're like, okay, buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, and then return to normal. Okay, returning to growth being in favor, specs being in favor, then fear, capitulation, which is like when you kind of sell out of your sell out of your position or uh, you're kind of done with the market, then despair, and then return to mean. So I mean, over the long run, yeah, these things go up. But I think this is a very, very good example of what happened with a lot of spec plays, a lot of penny stocks, a lot of these. You go, I mean, just literally go to uh, Yahoo Finance or Google Finance and pull up a chart of some of these names. I guarantee you they're going to look something like this. So um, maybe not as sharp, maybe not as dramatic, but yeah, you get the idea. So now let's go into emotional cycles, right? Let's go into you. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about me. Optimism. This is like 2020, right? Optimism, excitement, thrill, euphoria. Euphoria is like the peak emotion of like, oh my gosh, everything is green. Everything is going well. My portfolio is just growing 5% a day. Um, and again, February 2021. Now <laughs> we're kind of in this stage, right? Emotionally, you got some anxiety like, oh, maybe growth was overvalued. Oh, like maybe this is kind of the end of that speculative um, bubble in the market, right? Uh, and then you go into denial, buy the dip, right? This is gonna recover, this is gonna be fine, like these valuations are justified, then fear. And you can have, right, a lot of things play into this, right? Why did the market get fearful? Well, there was inflation fears, there was a 10 year uh, treasury yield rising, right? So there are actual reasons for this to happen. Uh, inflation fears means that the Fed might increase interest rates sooner than expected, and that not only would uh, create cause the valuations of a lot of high tech growth stocks to go down, but it also generally means that we're gonna maybe see some contraction. And uh, maybe value makes more sense. And if you're gonna see inflation, maybe you wanna go more towards plays that would cater to inflation, like a tap or Molson Coors, right? So then we go into <laughs> depression, then panic, capitulation, and then for some reason you get depression twice, which is um, obviously very sad, but where are we right now? So right now I think we're in fear, depression, panic, or capitulation. I think capitulation can be seen by people, I mean, I'm seeing a lot where people are like, I'm out of all my stocks, I'm in crypto now, right? So to me, that's telling me, like we're getting close, we're getting close to here. 
uh, maybe not in a lot of these stocks that I've personally never touched that were trading at like 200 price of sales. Um, but we are getting close, I would say, with some of these stocks where they're coming back to, to, value, to fair valuations and their earnings and revenue are catching up. And this is the future. This is the opportunity, right? Um, basically what I'm trying to say is max opportunity. And the last thing I'll leave you with in this video is how can you take advantage of this opportunity right now? This is like the most important part of this cycle. This is where things get better. And this is why I'm like, this is, we just have to wait this out. This is part of the cycle. This is part of investing. This always happens. And it's happened for, for like decades and years. This is why they can make theories and graphs and, and, uh, images of this because it's been mapped out over the course of history and to leave right now personally i think is a mistake i'm holding cash i'm keeping my dip list well let's just get into it so how to take advantage of this max opportunity concrete steps right first educate yourself and try and turn that mindset into what we talked about before from days to years or maybe if years is, is too hard uh talk about it in terms of months right 60 month timeline instead of five year timeline Sounds much more manageable. So educate yourself, right? And I'll talk about how to do that down below. Expand your view. So what this means is in the stock market, there's not only high growth stocks, right? There's not only tech stocks. There are other stocks that you can invest in, right? Um, I mean, I like to defer to Celsius because it is a stock that's obviously not a tech stock, but it is a high growth stock. So maybe that's not the best example. Personally, I'm primarily high growth, but for example, Bed Bath & Beyond, a stock I invested in about $18. Wall Street Bets kind of took it over, and I think, you know, definitely some luck played into that. But it was a stock that I thought was in the middle of a turnaround, made a lot of sense, bought into it. I'm out of it now, but that's an example of a stock that's not growth, not high tech, that you can still buy into in markets like this, right? There's a lot of value investors who are doing just fine. Talk about oil, uranium, right? A lot of opportunities out there beyond just tech and growth. So expand your view then don't be afraid to reset. So if this is your first year investing and you just have, you know, your portfolio is littered with a lot of stocks that you're like, okay, now that I've learned a bit more, now that I've educated myself, I realize maybe these aren't the best investments. Don't be afraid to kind of, I'm not, okay, this is not financial advice. <laughs> this is very important. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But what I would do maybe is say, okay, I'm willing to let go of some of these positions and maybe I'll put it into the SPY, the S&P 500, uh, while I continue to educate myself and learn more and find better opportunities. Or maybe I just hold it in cash and wait for the stocks that I have now to come down to better valuations, right? Do not be afraid to admit that you've made a mistake because I had to do this and trust me, it's the best thing you can do for yourself to learn and make progress is admit that I've made a mistake. Then create a dip list. This is something I've talked about before many, many times. Find companies that you really, really love, find the valuation you'd like to get them at and find that price, then create your list and then automate, automate. So how you might be asking like, how do you keep track of stocks and buying opportunities if you're not looking at them daily, right? Sometimes you have to look at stocks daily. Well, I would say set alerts. Yahoo Finance let you set, lets you set alerts. Fidelity lets you set alerts. So this way you don't have to look at stock market every single day. And if you your alert gets set off, well then that's when you go and you check your dip list and say, oh, it's, it's ready, right? It's like uh, waiting for the toaster to go off or something. It's like, ding, your stock is ready at the price you want it at. Um, and then finally, put yourself in a position of power with cash, right? As long as you have cash, no matter how far is the market is dropping, blah, 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 you always have opportunity if you have cash on hand. So personally, I'm about 12% cash right now. And the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, saying I'm long-term. How long-term? And be realistic with yourself because long term, like three to five years, it's very easy to say, it rolls off the tongue, three to five years. But it's a lot longer than a lot of people realize. So be realistic with yourself. Is this something you want to do? Maybe you integrate like a midterm kind of short term swing trading strategy into your long term portfolio. You could definitely do that. Um, and it should not be an excuse, right? So kind of like we talked about before. Saying I'm long term should not be an excuse to hold on to investment that you realize really maybe isn't that good of an investment. So uh, don't use that as a way to justify holding on to a losing position because I think the biggest one of the other big mistakes you can make is just holding on to a position because you're in the red, not because you think it's actually a good investment. So don't be afraid to re refresh and reset. Uh, you need to start from a good foundation, right? Uh, you need to understand 
how to value a company, even just using a PE ratio, PS ratio. And I'll make videos about this. I've actually made videos about this. I'll put it up here. My exact steps to doing research on a company. Um, and then if you're long-term, start learning for the long-term, right? What does that mean? So take literally one week. I encourage you to literally just take one week, stop watching videos that are saying like next 1000 X stock or next altcoin to the moon, safe moon, or like refine coin or, or, you know, I mean, whatever you want to say, stop watching those videos or reduce your consumption of those videos for just a little bit, including mine, right? If I come out with a video like saying 5X, whatever, maybe just hold off on it for a little bit. Watch videos that are like how to read balance sheets, how the economic machine works. Ray Dalio made a video on this and it's really good. It's 30 minutes. It's okay. Bump it up to 2X speed. Boom. 50 minutes of your life. Going to teach you so much more than 30 minutes an hour of these 1000 X videos, right? I'll be honest. And I'm the guy who makes these videos. <laughs> I, I try and like, you know, not be, as I give you genuine price targets. Like, okay, this is a two X, not a, not a 20 X, but spend time watching these videos for literally a week. And I promise you, you will be better off. Watch, watch YouTubers who are not just hype YouTubers, watch YouTubers who actually know what they're doing, who actually teach you things, who actually show you their thought process. The popular investor, great YouTuber. Okay. Very underrated. Only 30 K subs. He doesn't know I'm doing this. None of these YouTubers know I'm shouting them out right now. Dave Lee. He is not so much like walking you through his investment process, but he's a great guy to understand like how should a great investor think about opportunities and work through their due diligence. He's a really great guy to understand how he comes to conclusions and how he makes predictions and how that builds his case for his investments. And then Daniel Prong, I've had him on this channel before. He's been doing some really great work in terms of looking at the macroeconomics, uh, what's happening in the market right now. He did like a whole video on a JP Morgan report. I don't see anyone else in this stock market space doing this kind of stuff. So, I mean, expand your view on YouTubers as well. Um, expand your view on the videos you're watching. Just take a week off of these videos. Okay. Um, I promise you'll do much better and maybe you join a community, right? And this is the last thing I'll say, like, I mean, I'm not trying to like plug anything, but just to be genuine, the community that we're building an investor community, like we're having weekly mentor sessions, teaching people how to do valuations, how to actually look at their investment thesis, how to build projections on Excel. Uh, and I think like the, the response has been people feel much more confident in their investments and times like this is not as scary to them because they've built up that thesis, that conviction, that work. And it's going to be a lot of work, but trust me, you guys can do it. Um, I hope this video is helpful and, uh, it was a little longer than I expected, but I wanted to get this video out because I think it was important. Um, and we ended up with the football again. I don't know. I, I just like, it's kind of funny how it's like a football. Now. Okay. Anyways, uh, thank you guys so much for watching at this point in the video. Uh, you are the real MVP. Don't forget your piece. Oh, also subscribe. Like these are very off script videos. So like, I never really know when the intro is coming, but here it is. Uh, if you're watching this point in the video, you are the real MVP. Don't forget your piece and thank yous.